You think you own me, but you don't. You think you can destroy me, you can't. Your labels do not contain me. Your lies do not intimidate me. I will not be less than what I was created to be, and I will not run in fear. Time and time again, you've held me down, but not today. Today, I win the battle. Today, you run from me, because I am strong. I am courageous. I am an overcomer. so aggressive every time. <laughs> but I believe that there is power to overcome. I believe it because of the name of Jesus. And Jesus, you think of all the things that he has overcome. He's overcome sin by becoming the curse of sin for us. He's overcome death through a resurrection. He's overcome the devil, friends, because greater is the spirit that he's given us than the spirit that's in this world. Yes, we can overcome. Because of that, there's joy in this place. And I wanted to share with you what the psalmist said. He said, this is the day the Lord has made. So I'm going to rejoice and I'm going to be glad in it. Amen. And I want to talk to you today about labels. And I consider all the ways we use labels. Um, labels can be used to describe both food and people and organizations. I went to Panda Express and uh, Panda guides me on what kind of food I should eat. Because I, I look there and I see next to that orange chicken is a great label. Do you see that chili? That means it's not only delicious, but it's spicy. That means it's, it's really good to eat, especially if you grew up in Texas. That was me. Uh, my wife, she, she looks for a different label, and maybe there are some who, who also look for this label. Does anyone know what this means? Gluten-free, absolutely. Uh, we are very strict about following this and, and finding this and no cross-contamination, thank you very much. Um, and, and labels guide us on what to eat, what not to eat, right? Well, labels are also used for people. Um, for example, this person has a label. He is a, yeah, this is easy. What about this lady? She is a doctor. We all growing up wa watched uh, Oscar the, yeah, and if you're a Star Wars fan, You'll never forget Jabba the... And if you like some history, there is um, Alexander the... Yep. Um, I, I, I love the Chicago Cubs, back to organizations, and they are the lovable... I'm not going to... Winners! They're the lovable winners, guys. They've changed that in 2016, right? Uh, labels are used, right? Uh, again, food and people and organizations. And what I wanted you to consider as we've gathered here this morning is I wanted you to think of maybe three labels that you would use to define yourself. You have sermon notes, some of you like taking notes, some of you don't, I respect that. But could you think of just three labels that you would use to describe yourself? Well, as you're thinking about it, I'll fill in some possible categories. Some of you see yourself based on your station of life. You see yourself, well, I'm a husband, I'm a spouse, I'm a mom, I'm a father. Some of you, a daughter, a son. So some of you see yourself based on your occupation. I'm a teacher, I'm a banker, uh, I'm, I'm a doctor, um, I'm all these things. Some of you guys characterize by, by personality, okay, so I'm sensitive, don't ruffle my feathers. I'm thoughtful, I'm loud, I like to talk, right? I'm caring, I'm joyful, I'm quiet. What we're really talking about today is maybe some hurtful labels. Do you ever assign any of those? What are the hurtful labels you might give? These could be too loud, too quiet. Then there are the serious ones. Labels from sin, like greedy, gossiper, adulterer, drunk, addict, broken, worthless. I could go on and on and on with these hurtful labels. But the reason I was so excited to be here with you in a community because I believe God has given us grace to overcome even the most hurtful label that you're wearing. See, the passage for, for this whole series comes from 1 John, and it says, You, dear children, are from God, and you have, can you say that word? 
overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. And, and you have the right, by the grace of Jesus Christ, not to wear the label that someone else gave you and not to wear the label that the world gave you and not to wear the label that you give yourself, but you have the right, by the grace of Jesus Christ, to wear the label that he won for you by his blood. And we need to work this out a little bit today. We need to do some work. And the reason we need to do some work is because i, I got to tell you what's hanging in the balance. If we don't get this right, if we don't recalibrate. I was doing some study and the series is from Life Church, and, and they had this to say about um, what labels do. Uh, that the longer we carry a label, the less it describes our past and the more it determines our future and, and how we operate and, and how we see ourselves. It, it reminded me of um, doing homework with my daughter, Bella. Now, now, Bella, give me permission to say this, and, and so um, we were working on math, and, and math right now is, is not going so well. And as her dad, I don't want her to believe that she's not good at math. Because that's a whole category of life, friends, right? I don't want her going and ruling out any cash registers she might attend, um, you know, any engineering path that she might be on, um, uh, and anything that she might use numbers for. That's a lot of life. No, we may have gotten some problems wrong, but you're not bad at math. That's, that's fine. We're, so we work on processes and getting the process right so that they understand. Okay, right, there's, there's hope there. And this is not just, you know, the case study here with Bella, but if you do studies and if you give labels to a child in school, and let's say you label them slow, statistics and studies would show that they will perform less because of that label. Because of the teacher's expectations are a little bit lower, uh, some talk about learned helplessness, and so we got to be careful with labels. Whereas if you give a positive label, like advanced, then teachers' expectations change, and they also might change their, their thoughts about themselves. And so labels matter. And so because you guys are advanced in spirituality, we got to dig in to what God has said and what he describes of us. And today, the word of God, I love diving in, is from the prophet Isaiah. And Isaiah, um, he was writing, uh, let, let me set the scene a little bit for you. He was writing about when the people of God would be punished. They had disobeyed God for long enough and they were going to be punished by being sent into captivity into Babylon. But after a time in captivity, the Lord would send them out. And the Lord would remain and give a remnant that would return to Jerusalem, build the temple, build the wall, and from that remnant, a Savior would be born. And in the picture that we have today, we have this picture of Isaiah giving us of the remnant that's coming forward who's been saved from the bad labels and the bad identity and who's been redeemed. And that's what we get to talk about. And at Amazing Love, we've been doing something a little bit different in 2018. Um, we've been standing in honor of the word of God. So can I invite you to please stand? And this is just a recognition that uh, the power of this place is not a preacher, is not a person. It is the word of God, which he has preserved, which he still speaks into our hearts and to our lives. So today is from Isaiah. And it says, For Zion's sake I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not remain quiet till her vindication shines out like the dawn, her salvation like a blazing torch. The nations will see your vindication and all kings your glory. For you will be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will bestow. You will be a crown of splendor in the Lord's hand, a royal diadem in the hand of your God. No longer will they call you deserted or your land desolate. No, you will be called Hephzibah and your land Beulah. For the Lord will take delight in you and your land will be married. As a young man marries a young woman, so your builder marry you. As a bridegroom rejoices over his bride, so will your God rejoice over you. The Lord has made proclamation to the ends of the earth. Say to Zion, see your Savior comes. See his reward is with him and his recompense accompanies him. They will be called the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord. And you will be called sought after, the city no longer deserted. This is the word of God and there are a lot of names in there. Before you sit down, could you turn to someone next to you and say, just call me Hephzibah. Just call me Hephzibah. Just call me Hephzibah. Just call me Hephzibah. Just rolls off the tongue, does it? You may be seated. <laughs> winter Olympics are coming up, yeah? Uh, anyone looking forward to Winter Olympics? 
Okay, yeah, I always like seeing the flying tomato, Sean White, right? And see if he can get his uh, gold again. And, and, and I remember growing up, uh, knowing about the 1994 Winter Olympics and a couple of figure skaters. Uh, do you remember uh, these two ladies? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tanya Harding and Nancy Kerrigan. Nancy Kerrigan was kind of like a Disney princess. I mean, she was just put on a pedestal. Tanya Harding, not so much. And uh, she was known for a scandal that happened. Uh, an ex-husband of Tanya Harding uh, hired someone to take out Nancy Kerrigan. Crazy stuff. Real stories are, are just crazy. And, and Nancy Kerrigan, because of this, you know, has made uh, Newsweek back in the day, Why Me, is what she cried when she was attacked. And, and all of this to pretty much defame a Tanya Harding. If you were growing up in the 90s, Tanya Harding did not have such a good identity or label. She was known as maybe a dirty skater, as a bad lady, and it's interesting she's popped up in 60 Minutes and other news items at trying to maybe change the story. I don't know if that'll work, but uh, we'll see. And it just reminds me that certain people have earned their labels or have grown into certain labels that, that maybe aren't so good. Well, I have a point for bringing this up. Do you know the people of God that we're talking about, the Israelites, they earned their bad name. They did. I don't know if Tanya Harding did, but, but they sure did. In fact, we see their bad name in verse 4 when it says, no longer will they call you deserted, because that's what they're calling you. And deserted also just means forsaken. You're the forsaken nation. You're the forsaken ones. That's who you guys are. Or your land desolate, or your land called a wasteland. And let me tell you how they earned their label. Um, wasn't by bashing someone's knee, no. Um, rather, they, they had promises from God, and God said, if you would just follow these laws and decrees, you will be blessed. But they didn't. They were known for their idolatry. They were known for worshiping Baal and Ashtra, which would often lead to sexual immorality. They were known for worshiping the god of Molech, who desired child sacrifice. And because of all the times that they went away from God, God went away from them and God punished them. See, the, the label that they had as forsaken one was an earned label. Kind of reminds me of, of you and I. You and I come in today and we're also real with the fact that none of us are perfect. And maybe our label isn't idolater. But maybe we have the same sin of idolatry and maybe for some, our, our idol is, is the gift of sex. Because that's our idol, maybe the label adulterer has been worn. Or maybe there is the idol of money, which we're all tempted by in a very affluent society. So the label that we wear is, is greedy. Maybe our idol is pleasure. Do anything to have a good time. So the label that we've earned is wild or addict or drunk. The thing we're real with that amazing love is this, that there are hurtful labels that we have earned. And you can't escape them. And because we wrestle with this, I, I was just thinking of how detrimental it would be. I, I, what if we were like Tanya Harding? H have you thought of that? What if people in your community in this world knew you by your very worst moment? What if the only thing they remembered was that, that sinful, hurtful label that you were wearing? That would be a pretty awful existence, right? And while all of this is true, there's the grace of God this morning. See, we came to hear of someone greater. We came to hear of a man named Jesus Christ who came down to deliver us from what we earned and to give us something better. And what Jesus did is he found us and we were kind of like this. We were locked into a prison and he is the keys. It reminds me what he did for his own nation, that nation who was forsaken. He brought back. They didn't stay in captivity. No, he brought them back. He, he moved in the hearts of kings. He, he moved so that they could rebuild the temple, rebuild the wall, and a savior would be born. And I want to tell you, and maybe this is new news to you, maybe it's the same news to you, you may be locked into a prison, but Jesus has the keys 
See, Jesus came, and when he walked, he wore a different label, a label we wanted but couldn't achieve. It's the label perfect. It's the label spotless. It's the label blameless and pure and holy. And he achieved that for us so that all who believe in him could wear it. And he died on the cross. You know what the cross is? The cross is a label absorber. The, the cross took in every label, took in the label adulterer, uh, adulterer took in the label greedy, took in the label um, broken and sinful, and, and, and took on the worst. And what the cross did is it breathed out other labels. It breathed out forgiven. It breathed out loved. It breathed out holy. It breathed out child of God. That's what the cross of Jesus Christ has done. I don't know if you have any houseplants. I was learning about aloe vera. Aloe vera, I guess, can take in a lot of different fumes. Carbon dioxide and a few others. And what does it do? It breathes out life. That is what Jesus Christ has done. He is the ultimate aloe vera. He says, I'll breathe in everything bad, everything you deserve, and I'm going to breathe out life for you. That's what you get in the church of God by the grace of God through Jesus Christ alone. This is awesome, right? And so the gospel is this, friends, and you need to wear this better. You no longer have to live with hurtful labels you have earned, but with the beautiful labels the beautiful labels, that's what we get to talk about, that he earned. And the reason I know this is true is because of the story of Zacchaeus. Remember, I already told you this in the first lesson, um, that, that he was given the label tax collector, but that's not how it ended. His story ended, and look at the new name he had. He, he too was called a son of Abraham. Through faith in Jesus, he would be redeemed I remember a girl named Rahab, and Rahab was introduced in, in Scripture as a prostitute. Not a good label. But then in Hebrews 11, she's, she's marked as one of the heroes of faith. She's marked as one who, who will inherit eternal life through faith in Jesus Christ. She has a new label. And then I consider the people in the lesson. Verse 4, it didn't end just with deserted and desolate. No, it said, but you will be called Hephzibah. Love that name. And your land, Beulah. For the Lord will take delight in you and in your land you will be married. And we need to talk about these names, which I believe are ours as well. Can I talk about Hephzibah? How many of you have dogs? Just, I always like to, curious, okay. I have heard that when um, a dog sees its owner, it's happy to see you. Is this true? Um, and, and so I got a picture of a happy dog, right? Right. That's what we all want. Cats don't do this. Mm -mm. Um, but I have heard this theory that, uh, that, that the reason they're so happy to see you is, and this is the theory, I don't even know if this is true, so I might be spouting something completely false, but I heard a theory that they have no sense of time, so that every time they, that you leave, they don't know you're coming back. So every time you come back, it's like, wow! This is awesome. I thought you were gone forever. It's so good to see you. And feed me. And, and really good to see you. Yeah, and they tack you. And you know, right? I wish I had a dog sometimes. Because there's something about being delighted in. Right? There's something when you just get that unconditional love and you had a bad day or you didn't have a good hair day or you were feeling down about yourself, but that dog still loves you or at least loves the food that you give him. Right? You know, there's, there's something just great about being delighted in. Well, I, I'm going here because that, that word hefsibah, as we get back to it, that word hefsibah, it, it's explained here. It basically means the Lord takes delight in you. The Lord, when he sees you come to him, the Lord, as you walk on earth, the Lord, he just looks down and says, oh, my child, this is awesome, right? And so this is the name that I, I wish you would wear. The, the, the first name in Christ, I am called Hephzibah. I know it doesn't roll off the tongue, but it's great. I'm called Hephzibah. But I'm not done yet, because the Lord gave us another name. And maybe, maybe you saw that other name. Does anyone see that other name? What was the other name? Beulah. <laughs> I, I'm curious how many children are named Hephzibah and Beulah. You know, right? We should do a Google search. Anyway, um, Beulah. Let, let's, let's understand this picture. And I know it was a picture of the land, but it's also a picture of us. And, um, and, 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 and what God is trying to say to us through this word picture of Beulah is how a groom looks at a bride on a wedding day. How a bride looks at a groom on the wedding day. 
And maybe there are some single people, and, and you're looking forward to the day where, where that's going to happen, and you're looking forward to the day when, when, when you see that man or you see that woman, and, and you can imagine what that would feel like. Are there any married couples, brownie points possible here, who remember how good it was on that wedding day? Hey, hey, smart man, smart man. <laughs> St. Stephen's Beaver Dam, about 13 years ago, looking down the aisle, curly hair, white gown. This is a good day. And God, through the words of Scripture, says, when I see you, that's what I feel. When I see you walk around, when I see you go to work, when, when I see you wake up, I just see my bride standing in the middle of the aisle, dressed and ready for the groom, and it's, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. You're Beulah. And so in Christ, wear that name. Be called Beulah. Be called Beulah. Because you have the right through Jesus Christ. See, we don't have to be defined by our worst moments. We don't have to wear that. We need to wear the label that Christ has won for us. We need to be remembered as Beulah and Hephzibah. We need to understand this is the new identity that Christ has earned that we can walk in every day that we wake up. And this is a theological truth, but we need to put it to practice in our lives. And so I'm going to do my very best to give you some handles on this word so that when you walk out, you know how to implement this today. So let's talk about that. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if any of you had fun naming your children, naming your children. And, and it's funny how much thought you can put into naming children, right? Maybe you saw, you know, what the, the word meant and all of that kind of stuff. I remember with Bella, Bella means beautiful, and, and middle name was Grace, so that she'd know she's beautiful by the grace of God, which would level her out, not to be too prideful or too low either. You're beautiful by the grace of God. And, and Nadia is, is hopeful, and, and, and her middle name is Faith, and, and how much that, that, that's important to have hope and faith and, and all those good things, especially when it comes to Jesus. And, um, and, and I don't know if you've ever been a parent who's been frustrated by the nicknames their kids picked up. You know what I'm saying? And part of it is because, like, your seventh grade friend does not have the right to rename you something ridiculous. I remember when my, my nickname was Dirt, because someone called me Dusty, and then they just took it further to Dirt, and my mom was none too happy about Dirt. <laughs> let me tell you, okay? And what we recognize is that a parent has the right to name the child. The child cannot rename themselves. No, that's not going to happen. The friend doesn't have a child to rename themselves. No, it's not going to happen. And in verse 2, um, I find that you have no right to change the name the Father gave to you. Look, look at verse 2 with me, the, the end of verse 2. It says, you will be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will bestow. And what I find is that if God gave you a name, you have no right to change that name. You are not Puff Daddy. You are not Prince. You are not Mr. Ocho Cinco. No, you are a child of God. You are Beulah and Hephzibah. By the grace of God, don't change your name. What that means is that if you want to walk with your head down, you don't have the right to. You're delighted in. If you want to consider yourself worthless, you have no right to. You're beautiful. And I say that in a strong way by the grace of God because this is the truth. You know who's at work trying to give you a different name? There is the prince of the world who's trying to get us down. He's called a terrorist, a mental terrorist. He lives up here and he will live as long as you let him and you got to kick him out. So you have no right to, to rename yourself. It's, it's not up for debate. So how do you work that out even more? Well, I think that the, the work we should do is to think of a way to wear God's label. We've got to think of a way. And so one of the ways that you can do walking out of amazing love is, is now you got those uh, name tags. Uh, I, got a, I got a name tag. I worked on it. I, I picked Hephzibah. I don't know if you're going Beulah route, but, but I, I got Hephzibah. And, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, yeah, right? By the grace of God. He loves me. By the grace of God, he loves you. You're not worthless. You're beautiful. I'm, I'm Hephzibah, right? 
And you got to not just do that here and now, because I know you recalibrate every week on Sunday, and that's a good thing. You got to do this daily. And, and so I don't know what this means in your life. Maybe it means that in your mirror, uh, you, you write Hephzibah in lipstick. I don't know. Uh, or you're delighted in. One of the, one of the two, right? Uh, maybe, maybe that when you wake up, you wake up, you get up to get down. Get up to get down. Because you're going to get on your knees and pray. And you're going to remind yourself, today, Lord, I'm starting my day recalibrating knowing that I'm Hephzibah. Knowing that I'm delighted. and Knowing that I'm beautiful because of Jesus Christ, my Savior, Lord. And I'm, I'm going to get up to get down. Maybe for some of you it is, it is journaling about this that, that I'm going to write in my journal. I am a forgiven and loved child of God and nothing's going to get in the way of that and I'm going to recalibrate. Uh, maybe for some of you, you're going to put that in your locker. Maybe for some of you, you write notes on your hand. You're going to write that on your hand. Uh, maybe if it's your flavor, you get a tattoo. I don't know. Um, but anyway, uh, parents don't get mad at me. Anyway, um, <clears throat> but you got to think of a way. Because you ever wake up one day and you had a good day yesterday, but now it's off and it's, you're like, what did I dream about? Because it's already, uh. There's work to recalibrate. There are daily steps you need. Think of a way to wear that label. You don't have the right to call yourself something that the Father has not called you. No, no, no. Beautiful delighted in. But as I close, and I'm going to close, do you know what's really interesting about this word of God is that some see it as a double fulfillment. Some see this section not only as the nation of Israel being brought out of Babylon, but also as the church of God who was once ugly and forsaken who has been delivered by Jesus Christ. They see the double fulfillment that this is a reference to all believers who now would be called by a different name, not just Israel, but, but, but everyone who ever lived who clings to Jesus and, and because of that, I, I see a new nuance to one of our passages. Uh, it, it said in, in verse 1 that her righteousness would go forth like brightness. And, and a righteousness not that we wear, but that Christ earned for us, right? And her salvation like a torch that is burning. When I heard that salvation would be like a torch burning, it reminded me of something that Jesus said the church of God would be like. Because Jesus would also talk that we are the light of the world, that we'd be this city. And he put it this way, you're the light of the world, a town built on a hill cannot be hidden. And so what I find is that one of the things we need to do is to share this label, is to share the beautiful label that, that Christ has earned with others. See, see your, your friend at work She's calling herself not Hephzibah and Beulah, but if you really understood what she called herself and what the world is calling her, your heart would break and you're the only one who can share with her a new name. Are you going to do it? Are you going to risk it? It's what we do by inviting people to this place to gain a new name. It's what we do by having a program called Mornings with Mommy so we can love on people and share a new name. It's what we do as this church body. We share this label that Christ has won. It's what he created us to do, not just for us. Got to take some extra labels and hand them out and hand them out. Don't you know you're loved? Don't you know you're delighted in? May God so bless us, not only to wear it, but to give it. Now let me pray for you. Close with prayer. Lord, today I give over the hurtful labels I've been wearing. I don't want to wear it anymore. And I know your spirit has power over it. Help me to see myself as Hephzibah, the one you delight in. Help me to walk around wearing the labels Christ has won for me. And now help me to share these labels with others. In Jesus' powerful name, amen.